Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassidy Cash. It may seem like a normal thing to suggest that the world's greatest playwright would have a theater, but it turns out in turn of the century, turn of the 17th century England, this wasn't necessarily the case, which is why this week we're asking the question, did William Shakespeare own a theater? William Shakespeare did own a theater. He owned two, in fact, one of which you've probably heard of and the other you may not have. But the history behind him getting these theaters is really one of astonishing innovation and entrepreneurship because when William Shakespeare and his contemporaries were putting on plays in the first place, it was a relatively new thing historically to be telling secular stories. The theater that William Shakespeare was doing got its start in religion and churches where they would use performance to tell stories from the Bible. And it grew from that into telling all kinds of stories during performance and using stagecraft to tell any manner of tale. And the entire idea of having a purpose-built theater or a place where you were specifically performing plays was a radical invention when it came to theater during William Shakespeare's lifetime. Up until this point in history, performing troops would travel around to different locations and they would perform at places like inns at court or even at schools or shops or at the homes of their patrons who were supporting these theater endeavors. You know of William Shakespeare performing before the court of Queen Elizabeth, but the other nobility would invite traveling players to come and put on a production at their home as well. And they would invite all of their friends and neighbors over to a party. You may have seen the movie Pride and Prejudice where Mr. Darcy has a party at his hall and the entire county comes over to see it. These kinds of things were popular among the nobility and some of the forms of entertainment would include a play. So up until the 17th century or late 16th century, because we're talking about the 1590s at this point, there wasn't really the idea of a theater that was built where people would come there and watch the show. This was a new concept. And James Burbage was one of the first people to do this. In fact, he built the very first purpose-built theater around the year 1576 when William Shakespeare was just 12 years old. It was fittingly named the theater. The space itself looked a lot like what you'll think of with the Globe Theater in that it was a multi-sided structure and it would had three tiers and it was an uncovered open area called a yard in the center. And the people who paid the cheapest tickets had to stand for the duration of the production. Now, thanks to Shakespeare's lost years, or that section between when he headed off to London and when he became famous, we're not really sure where Shakespeare was or what he was doing. So I don't know exactly how he got to be friends with James Burbage, but we do know that he became friends with James and Richard Burbage, because when the Burbages lost their lease on the theater where they were holding these plays, it would be William Shakespeare and two of their other friends who banded together with the Burbages to save the structure. You see, the land owner that was leasing this to them, the Burbages owned the actual structure, but they didn't own the land where the theater was sitting. And so the landowner refused to renew their lease for a variety of reasons that is enough for an, an entire other episode. But he thought he was being very sneaky and tricking them out of their theater by refusing to renew their lease. But he underestimated the shrewdness of James Burbage and his company. James Burbage, Richard Burbage, William Shakespeare, and two other of their friends, under the cloak of night and in the middle of winter, no less, disassembled the entire theater timber by timber and moved the whole thing across the Thames River to the south bank of the river in the Southwark district, where they built what is then renamed as the Globe Theater. Shakespeare's famous Globe Theater was moved timber by timber across an entire river in the dead of winter it's truly remarkable. They moved the whole thing, reassembled it, and opened the Globe Theater in 1599 to great acclaim. The Burbage's theater did much better than contemporary theaters, and one of the reasons is because they had their acting companies perform in repertory, which means they had long contracts. So instead of being a reception place 
for traveling theaters, they had a company that would perform there regularly. Shakespeare's The Lord Chamberlain's Men was one of these companies that performed successfully at the theater and then later at the Globe. The five friends who had banded together to move the theater across the river would form a shareholder's approach to theater, which was also innovative and not done until William Shakespeare and James Burbage gave it a try. Two other notable theaters that Shakespeare did not actually own were the Swan Theater and the Curtain Theater. They are popular Elizabethan theaters at the time. They were very high society. They were well thought of. They had a high reputation at the time that they were in existence. And the Lord Chamberlain's men, or one of the Lord Chamberlain's men, actually owned a share in the Curtain Theater, but we don't know for sure if that means that Shakespeare was involved or not. We do know that when Ben Jonson's Every Man and His Humor was performed at the Curtain Theater, William Shakespeare was a member of the cast. Now, the Globe was an open-air theater. And that means that it was a really awesome space for performing theater, but it was also subject to the weather because the center is open. So if it rains or it's too hot or it's too cold, you're having to deal with all of that when you're performing these plays. And so it had been long plotted, and this is historically documented, that Shakespeare and Burbage had long thought about putting together an indoor theater. But it wouldn't be until 1609 when the Burbages took control of the Blackfriars Theater in London that this dream became a reality. Now with the Blackfriars Theater, again, you you see James Burbage and William Shakespeare coming together to create a truly entrepreneurial venture because the man who sold the Burbages, the Blackfriars Theater, thought he was giving them a lemon. It had done very bad, its location was very bad, and they thought there's no way this guy's gonna be able to do anything with this theater. And in fact, that again is a whole nother episode into the history of the Blackfriars Theater. But basically, James Burbage turned this place into a really high society event. He was able to charge higher ticket prices and he was able to attract a higher uh, societal clientele. And he used an innovative approach, including artificial lighting and a much more intimate setting. Some of Shakespeare's plays, like Cymbeline, were thought to have been written specifically to be performed in this new venue of an intimate setting with artificial lighting. The result of their amazing combination of Shakespeare's artistry and James Burbage's business sense meant that there was immense revenue in these theaters for the Burbages and for William Shakespeare. And that too many times people had underestimated the drive and capability of these men's entrepreneurial spirit. The history of Elizabethan theaters is vast and it's very interesting. So to help you explore this topic further and to learn about some of the other Elizabethan theaters I didn't specifically mention in this episode, you can check out links to learn more articles. These are all the sources that I used to put this video together today and they're all listed below in the show notes as learn more information for you. That's it for this week here at Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassie Cash, and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. If you would like to see a hand-illustrated map of the theaters of London in the year 1600, I have put one together. It's a hand-illustrated map. You may know that I am an artist, and I share history through art to help you understand and reference what we talk about on the episodes here on Did Shakespeare. I give them away for free to my newsletter subscribers. They are for sale in my Etsy shop, so you can go and buy them there. But if you would like a free copy of the theater maps of 1600s London, you can download that for free at the link below by joining that Shakespeare Girl newsletter. I send out all of the new content on Monday of every week, and you can join to get that. Unsubscribe at any time and keep the artwork as my gift to you. Thanks again for being here, and I'll see you guys next week.